uh, probably not a terribly long one, he says. Uh, today, June 9th, in 1940, uh, was still uh, a day of action, but as is typical of anything that happened after Dunkirk up until the armistice in a week or so, or oh, indeed, until the Germans marched into Paris on June 14th. Uh, things were actually still happening, but no one knows much about it. And the Germans are now steadily heading south towards Paris. They've crossed the Seine for the first time. Uh, at the same time, they're head mopping, going west into Normandy. And today's the day that after some stiff fighting, uh, the 51st Highland Division are forced into saint Valery with elements of the French army by none other than General Erwin Rommel, who was, of course, what they would call nowadays, an uh, unknown. Uh, the French government, I would imagine, are now gripped by a sense of panic, saying that on June 10th they fled Paris. So you can only imagine what must have been going on in the corridors of power in Paris, and indeed the, uh, the streets of Paris. Uh, virtually two million people uh, left Paris as far as civilians and the like went by the time the Germans marched in and I might cover that in a separate video but nonetheless it is what it is and Churchill you know he keeps flying over every so often to speak to the Ladier and the others and try and G him up and the fight's gone out of him in some respect some would argue they never had the fight I mean books have been written on the French in in the war from the moment Germany invaded all the way through to the armistice and uh, he just there's no easy way of saying it really now it's not to say the French army were a bunch of cowards as like stereotypes and that have it since 1940 to this day we are still making jokes about the French always surrendering and yet if you look historically as QI says France have actually won much many more wars than they have lost in it is only the second world war that they surrendered in in the past couple hundred years, or at least lost. I mean, obviously the Napoleonic Wars, but they have not made a habit of losing wars, it seems. But though elements of the French army and the Air Force and you know the Navy have fought tremendously bravely, there's a lack of cohesive leadership at the very top. There's a lack of cohesive leadership uh, uh, below, as evidenced during the Dunkirk evacuation, when there just was no coup at uh, times for the last few days anyway, there seemed to have been no communication, or not much communication, between the French and the British leaders. I mean, William Tennant was, had no idea of certain French plans on the last couple of days. Uh, and the French, uh, that he's in the dark. And some people were taken prisoner uh, at certain clearing stations, uh, casualty stations and the like, that had they, the French bothered informing them that the Germans were coming up the road or that they had the opportunity you know, why don't you, we'll let you go, you know, you, you best get going, take this way, whatever, you know, basic things that they were taken prisoner. The 51st Highland, unknown and not known in some respects. I mean, like I say, you know, the, the British collective consciousness historically is out, Dunkirk ends, that's it. Next up, Battle Britain. But we still had almost 100,000 members of the British Expeditionary Force scattered all the way through France to the south, virtually it seems, at the south, at the South Valerie. I always have to look it up on the map because my French geography is not too hot necessarily, but it's in Normandy, so it's where it's along the coast from Dun from Dunkirk, Calais, Boulogne, respectively. It's much further along, I'm sure, geographically, but they've been hemmed in. For some reason, I always think of the way that the histories of South Valerie is written. I always keep thinking it's actually um, sort of down towards the Spanish border or windy yeah because they write about cliffs and stuff but then i guess there are cliffs in uh there are cliffs in <laughs> normandy what am i on about major general fortune commands the 51st highland and they did their best and as with um commander at command brigadier nicholson at calais there are conflicting reports and versions of what London was saying to the 51st or expecting of the 51st you know, fight your way out, don't fight your way out or hold firm or send help oh, we're not sending help but the Navy's off the shore surely you're going to get us out of it no, I don't, we're, they're just there to uh, I mean the British response after, you know, Dunkirk was a defeat and it was not helped the post-Dunkirk image of landing Allenbrook at Cherbourg at 
some point in June, I forget the exact date now if I was looking, with a few thousand, a few hundred, well, a few tens of thousands of men, I believe, and left like two days later having done nothing but just walk around. And it's like, well, they, they have been sent over with this vague idea to sort of establish a bridgehead at Cherbourg because, you know, Germany now is finishing off uh, France. Now that, you know, they got to the Channel, they went to Calais, Dunkirk, and Boulogne, you know, you know back to front. And now it's time to finish the job. And so San Felipe is very swiftly besieged. Uh, the Germans have the high ground quite literally with the cliffs, so firing down into it. The 51st and French do their best uh, very tenaciously. They're fighting and fighting and fighting, thinking they can hold on. They'll surrender in a few day, a couple of days' time. Now, also this week in history, Benito Mussolini does what uh, he did best. Wait for somebody to be virtually dead before kicking their corpse by in declaring war on France. Uh, FDR said after Italy declared war June 10th, June 11th, that uh, effectively they have stabbed their neighbour in the back as he fell down. It's not too far from the truth. Um, and even then, as is typical of the Italian record from when Mussolini took over. They, like in Ethiopia, they thought it would be a walk over. No. <laughs> no, not by a long shot. Like the Brit they should have looked at the British in South Africa during the Boer War. Um, at the same time, they don't get very far, literally or metaphorically, in France. Uh, I believe they took, only went on, they only went a few miles, it looks like, into France and took a town whose name is, I'm not having much luck today, I must be tired and more hungover than I realised. Um, and they took a town, met, uh, and it all was done by the... Yeah, it was tomorrow, June 10th, and they were all done by June 25th. Uh, the Italians, curiously enough, actually lost more dead than the French. The French were in double figures, and the Italians were in triple figures. What did it accomplish? They got certain concessions from the French, and uh, Mussolini looked quite chuffed. And it really didn't take long in 1944-45 for the French to get what they lost back. It's Mussolini just... He's a bloody buffoon. You know, I, 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 that's the fear of him even now. And there's, you know, the books that come out and go, well, yeah, he was an idiot, he was a dictator, but he was not as stupid as this remembers. And yet, you only have to... Unfortunately, you have a passing glance at things sometimes, a first image sometimes, and you think... Oh, bloody hell, he waited until France was literally on their knees. Like, German, they, they, the Germans were on the verge of marching into Paris. The Germans have now rolled up three major channel ports. Uh, forget the Low Countries north, you know, in, as far as France is concerned, the Germans have gone right through to the channel in the, in the space of a few days. They've wiped out these channel ports after much effort. Well, with Dunkirk, it took almost a week. Uh, well, over a week, uh, they take Paris, June 22nd, armistice. The Italian armistice is June 25th. What does Mussolini do four days after Dunkirk? You know, let's declare war. And it didn't get far, as I say, because both armies were defensively minded from before the war. So, it, yeah. Uh, during the Battle of Britain, he wanted a piece of the action and he sent a couple of squadrons of uh, bombers and fighters to the, of the Legia Elena Nautica, which I can never say, and they were embarrassment. It is hard to say who thought they were embarrassment more, the RAF or the Luftwaffe. <laughs> You know, the Germans, I think, had a, in the war anyway, had a, I don't know if they still do, but they, you know, they probably looked down their noses at Italy during the war, think to themselves, my God, here they are. But, you know, Johnny come lately to, to the action, and uh, they were one at the first sign of a stiff breeze. And they turn up, they try and attack Britain. I think they might have tried, they got to Raymond or something. I have to double check it. I, it's, it's one of the under, very rarely told stories of the Battle of Britain. And or the war, and um, you know they were annihilated, or at least punched around the sky by the RAF. We must have thought Christmas had come early. So, and then look at what happened in Sicily and Italy itself. I mean, you could say, well, 
the Allies didn't have it, their own way in Sicily or Italy with the inflations, no, but the Germans were doing all the heavy lifting, it seems. Uh, I mean, they had technically, technically Italy by 1943 was German in terms of uh, the forces. And then, of course, the Italians uh, surrender and side with the new government, sides with the uh, Allies. So, uh, Mussolini is hung from a, a lamppost, having been spat at, stabbed, pissed on, and anything else, probably. So, uh, all stems from this week, I'd imagine. I don't know. Uh, I kind of wished that my mentor at university uh, was watching these videos because he'd be shaking his head through each and every single one that I've done as far as my history videos have gone. And then if he does what no one else does, no one does actually, because uh, I've had a look, my viewership is two, <laughs> two per week on all the crap I turn out, he would probably shake his head further, but I'm a history student, or I was, because I graduated in 2008. I'm a tour guide without a job. Well, I'm in limbo, because I'm on furlough, so you've got to put that degree to some use, I'm sure. And as you can see, I don't read with any notes or anything, so I've, I've got my phone propped against the laptop, but... The laptop is, you know, I've got YouTube set up because I've got to upload these videos. I'm not reading, you know. I keep a book, so, well, I'll put the Dunkirk book back in my room. But it's all for up top, hence why it's a scatterbrained approach. So I might see you, so to speak, when the Germans, so to speak, march into Paris in a few days' time. <laughs>